how are you doing? Today I'm tackling a biology topic which is cloning. We're going to be talking through how you can clone both a plant and an animal. And yeah, I'm going to just give you lots of detail which will help you get lots of marks in the exams. So first of all, remember that a clone is a genetically identical individual that has been produced asexually from one parent. And the reason why we clone things, um, it's been carried out for many, many years by farmers, is because farmers particularly like to get their ideal specimens of the animals, so for example a cow that produces huge amounts of milk or a bull that produces calves that are very good for meat and what we like to do is clone those because they have amazing traits that we want to keep. So that is why we do it, the same with plants and it's actually a cheaper way often to generate a large number of very high quality plants. Let's take plants first, so first of all we can use cuttings and all you do is you literally trim a bit of the stem off, you dip it in rooting powder and what that does is it encourages the roots to develop and then you replant them in suitable conditions, lots of sunlight, nice bit of warmth, plenty of water and oxygen and you'll find that a new plant that should grow and it should be, it will be, a genetically identical version of the parent plant so it will be a clone. In more recent years farmers have been using tissue culture and all they have to do now is they scrape a few cells off the plant, they give it perfect conditions again, plenty of hormones, warmth, but what happens is it generates a huge ball of cells which can then be separated off to grow into thousands of plants which are genetically identical again. So that's what farmers tend to use these days. Moving on to animals now, this is a nice quick video. The first way in which we clone animals is using embryo cloning. So in this situation you get, for example, your prize bull, your prize cow, you mate them and then obviously the sperm from the bull will fertilise the egg from the cow and it will develop into first a zygote and then an embryo. Then what the farmer does is that he washes out the uterus of the cow to remove the embryo from the cow. And at this point the embryo is so early on in its life that actually all the cells are unspecialised, they're undifferentiated, and what that means is that the cells can develop pretty much into anything at that point. So if you break up that early embryo into lots of different parts, you can then transplant the mini embryos into the uterus of what we call surrogate cows. So these are effectively incubating machines where the calf will grow for nine months but they won't actually be genetically related to the calf in question. Finally adult cell cloning. This is slightly more complicated but in this situation what you do is you get a body cell, so like a skin cell, a muscle cell, any kind of cell, a body cell though that has a full number of chromosomes from which an whichever animal you're trying to clone. You remove that body cell and you take the nucleus out of the body cell and that is what we call ennucleating the cell so remove that nucleus from the cell then we need to get an egg cell from a surrogate or just any other cow and what we do is we remove that nucleus too and we discard it and we place the nucleus from the body cell inside the egg cell because the egg cell is going to just contain this information and we use an electric shock to cause them to fuse together at that point we just need to implant that new egg cell into the uterus of the surrogate so that gets implanted into the uterus and then it undergoes mitosis to divide to create the embryo which will then develop into the new calf. So it's I hope you found my video helpful, don't forget to leave me a comment and subscribe, it's so great that so many more of you are subscribing, I love to see it. I'll see you soon. Bye. Describe the stages used to produce a cloned mammal. Right, this is what I was just talking about. So what you need is the egg cell from basically any mammal of the same species. You need to take out a body cell from the animal that you want to clone. You need to remove the nucleus from both. You need to insert the body cell nucleus into the now empty egg cell and use an electric shock to bind them. Then you need to place that cell into the uterus of a surrogate and at that point it will undergo cell division by mitosis in order to form an embryo. Um, so yeah, just give all the steps in order, um, sensible order, they need to be chronological and you're fine and I promise, yeah, it won't get any more difficult than that, it's just remembering all the steps is the problem. As embryos develop, some genes and cells are turned off and some genes are turned on. This allows cells to become specialised for particular functions. Usually after cells have become specialised, they cannot change again into different types of cells. Question 8a. What is a gene? Okay, this is a definition you just need to learn off by heart and you just need to say it's a section of DNA which codes for a particular protein. 8b. Scientists have developed a way to change specialised cells back into embryo-like cells by a method called IPS. Read the information in the box. Make sure you do read this information, otherwise you'll freak out when you look at the actual question because you'll be like, I don't know anything about this. 
so read every last bit that they give you. Cells made using IPS can be changed into different types of cells. Scientists plan to take skin cells from an endangered species of monkey called a drill and change these cells into IPS cells. The I these IPS cells can then be changed into egg cells or sperm cells. After fertilisation, the embryo can be inserted into the womb of a female of a non-endangered species called a mandrill. The mandrill is closely related to the drill. Describe similarities and differences between the IPS method and the adult cell cloning. Right, on what you want to do is divide your answer into two obviously similarities and differences and start with what you're most comfortable with, which for me is talking about the similarities between the two methods. And just point out really basic things, things which you might think are too basic to get a mark, but you're probably going to be successful. Um, so what you want to say first of all is that both methods use a body cell and that both methods um, result in the formation of an embryo and remember that the embryo needs to be transferred into the uterus of a surrogate mother. So for all of these points they are common between the IPS method and the adult cell cloning. Now we need to look at the differences. Make sure like I said you split your answer up so that two marks are for similarities, two marks are for differences. The difference is, is that IPS uses sexual reproduction and the IPS surrogate mother doesn't have to be the same species, whereas we know in adult cell cloning that it needs to be the same. Um, the second, another difference, sorry, is that IPS doesn't result in any ennucleation, or it doesn't result in any removal of nuclei from cells. So I've given a lot of points there, probably almost eight marks worth. You only need two for each. So for me, the most straightforward marks are to say that the similarities that they, is that they both use a body cell and they both use surrogate mothers. And for me, the easiest difference is, is to say that the surrogate mother is a different species and that there's no nuclei transfer. But basically, choose whatever you like. Right, so now I found a question which touches on tissue culture. So question five, plant hormones are used in horticulture. Name one plant hormone. Okay, say orcs in here. 5B, the diagram shows how new plants are produced using tissue culture. You have a potted plant, you remove the leaf, scrape a few cells off of it, and then grow these cells on agar jelly using nutrients and hormones, blah, blah, blah. And eventually we have a clone of the original potted plant. Nice. 5B part 1. Tissue culture is a type of asexual reproduction. Give the main features of asexual reproduction. Right. Many things you could say here. First of all, a main feature is that there is only one parent involved. Second of all, there is no genetic variation in the offspring. Remember that they're clones of the original parent. And lastly, just state that there is no fusion of gametes, i.e. no sexual reproduction, no fertilisation occurs. Right, 5A, 5B part 2, another method of producing new plants is by taking cuttings. Suggest one advantage of using tissue culture and not using cuttings to produce plants. There's just one thing really here to mention, which is that tissue culture can result in thousands of plants being produced from a single plant, and it's super quick in comparison to using a cutting, because remember with a cutting you're just chopping off a piece of the plant and repotting it effectively with hormones into soil. So just say here that many more plants are produced using tissue culture. Nine, the diagram shows one method of cloning sheep. Okay, you have the white-faced male, which we're removing the body cell from, which tells us that's the animal we're cloning, and then we have the black-faced female, um, from which we're taking the eggshell, and that's just being used effectively as an incubator, which you're going to place the male's genetic information into. Um, and remember, they fuse by electricity, they get replanted into a surrogate, blah, blah, blah. 9a, the fusion of the body cell from the male sheep and the egg from the female sheep is an example of asexual reproduction explain why. Um, first of all, you can say here that there is no mixing of the genetic material. And second of all, just say that it's because the nucleus was removed from the egg cell before fusion. And that's all you need to write. 9b, give the gender and face colour of the cloned lamb. Gender, face colour, right. Okay, even if you've got no idea what's going on, you've got a 50% chance of getting it right because there's only two sheep mentioned. But remember what I just said when I was reading out the description of the question, which is that it's the white-faced male that we remove the body cell from. And remember, it's the body cell which always contains the genetic information of the animal that we're trying to clone. So bearing that in mind, we know that this new baby sheep will be white-faced and it will be male. Give the reasons for your choice. Right, I was kind of just blabbing on about that, but it's because the genetic information comes from the white-faced male only. Right, I think I'm going to stop there. I hope you found all these added questions useful, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.